and that's the time I wrestled a badger. So there you go. That, that was the only time? That was the first time I wrestled a badger. <laughs> I mean, come on. Hey, Sportsman Channel! Thanks for tuning in. You've got... Cheers. Uh, you've got Ryan Gresham. <laughs> and KJ. KJ here from Gun Talk Media. And we produce a couple different shows. Um, we produce Guns and Gear. We produce Gun Venture. We produce um, First Person Defender, you may have yeah. seen, on Sportsman Channel and also on our YouTube and Facebook and stuff. Um, but it's all under the Gun Talk umbrella. Um, umbrella. Yeah. Yes. Well, we, the umbrella we got a big of companies. umbrella. Yeah. But, but we're but, about to watch um, Guns of Gear. And, and it's the Rimfire Roundup. It's the Rimfire Roundup. So we thought we'd give you a quick little teaser of what you're going to see tonight from the trailer. On this episode of Guns and Gear, Barnes bullets in Remington factory ammo, the Colt competition pistol in stainless, Ruger chambers the scout rifle in a real thumper, Smith & Wesson's 22 rimfire package of fun, and how the Crimson Trace laser puts shots on moving targets. So there you go. All right, so um, yeah, we thought we'd give you guys a little kind of behind the scenes of when we're filming this stuff, um, stuff that happened in this episode with these segments. And when we're filming Guns and Gear, um, what we try to do is give the audience a little bit beyond what you can see in a manufacturer's spec page on their yeah. website. You know, they can tell you it has a 16 inch barrel yeah. and it holds this much ammo, but once you get it, you feel it, and then you use it, yeah. it's a way different uh, ball game. Way different ball game. We both have our computers down here, so we'll yeah. be monitoring comments. So if you have any comments, you have any questions, bring them on. Let's, yeah. let's, yeah, let's talk ready, about we're it. Yeah, we're ready to answer them. Uh, you know, uh, one of the fun things about guns and gear is, uh, from my point of view, because I'm mostly behind the camera, I'm, I'm making sure the guys are saying the right things and, and making sure we're getting the shots that we need. Um, and a lot of times we've, you know, we've mapped these episodes out beforehand on what we want to do and what we want to show our viewers and you guys and what we think you guys believe is important to this product. Right. So I think that's that's what we try to do with guns and gear. Is, we try is, to. Oh, we also because a lot of times there's a product that has a lot of different things that are cool about it, but there's not enough time in the show to. I mean, to spend and probably you don't want me to spend 30 minutes just going on and on about something. So we pick one thing, one feature, and try to really demonstrate that and, and show you how this can really affect your shooting. So, um, Joe Montagna is about to wrap He's, this up. He is wrapping it up. And it was actually a really good show because we got to, we get a chance to actually sit here and watch a little bit of it. But We appreciate did, him opening for us. Absolutely, because yeah. people love Joe Montagna. <laughs> Didn't he play in the Waterboy? He's a boy? national treasure. Wasn't he in the Waterboy? Was he? No. John, Joe Montagna. <laughs> <laughs> get in the car, like, come on. <laughs> here we go, wait, here we go. All right. This is... This is what everybody's here for, I'm sure. Yes, everybody's here for this and not uh, this. <laughs> you know what's really nice is to actually have like Tom doing the voiceover on mm -hmm. this because I think when people would probably start hearing our voices do the voiceover for this, they'd probably be like, Yeah, change what? the channel. We're done with this. Ah, uh, Tennessee and Oregon's tuning in. All right, we got Tennessee, we got Oregon. Yeah. So Jessica Brooks Stevens, so people may not know, so her parents started Barnes Bullets, and she is a hunter. No, she's and not is, any hunter. She's a dangerous game hunter. Oh, like, yeah. That, she's, like, I didn't know that. Oh, like, she is serious about uh, African hunting, yes. elephants, buffalo, all that kind of stuff. And, um that's her. That's her ball game. Yeah, and I think that I think part of the passion that came in with you like this, the the all copper stuff, is the the ballistics have to do what she wants it to do, which she goes to Africa so much, and that's her passion mm -hmm. that she's gonna make sure it does what it says it's gonna do. And and I think that's one of the cool things about Jessica. She is great people. She's fun to talk oh, yeah. to because she's, she's been all around the world twice. Yeah. Um, and I've actually been out to the Barnes factory a few times. The way they make their all copper bullets is so cool. 
Um, they've got these coils of copper, uh, well, well, copper tubing basically. Really? And it's going dook, 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 and it's cutting the copper tubing. Like in the, in yeah, the actual it's like, a, length? In the length. Okay. And then they shape it and form it and really? do whatever kind of magic they do to it. Wow. Um, but obviously, um, the Remington Outdoors group bought Barnes Bullets right. a, a, a few years back. And so it's, it's probably a good thing for everybody. Remington right. has this huge manufacturing capability. Yeah. Barnes is, you know, they know how to make bullets and, and really premium stuff. Right. So this is where the, the rubber now, meets the road yes. is shooting it into jail. This is what everybody wants to see. And I'm going to tell you right now. This was shot in, I think it was June when we shot so this, hot. and it was hot. So hot. So if you look at our board right there, it's actually really funny. The The gelatin was sticking. It starts melting. It starts melting into the wood. Yeah. And it, uh, so I, like, I'm trying to clean this stuff up and make it, you know, you've got to make it look good for TV and stuff. And I think we say here, it's not a ballistic test. No, it's not. No. This was just we, kind of a... We wanted to try to catch a bullet and, and take a look at yeah. what the expansion and, looked like. And we found out on this one it was hard to catch these bullets because they were, I mean, they were so fast going through. And you could see some of our other trails right there. Yeah. But we, we were able to catch one. I think it was all like on our third shot or something because they would they might hit and they might hit a, a fra fragment of uh, a bullet that we had shot earlier and it would come out. But Well, so this was cool. I just thought, you know, they have... Uh, the 223 and 62 grain barns. Yeah. That's when you can really hunt with it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a great hunting round. Yeah. <laughs> now, Colt, now this one was a fun one to film because Mark Reddle, he is, he's a competition shooter. He's at, a good shooter. Hard. I mean, he's a great shooter. Super nice guy. And, man, when they came out with this competition, I think people loved it because it was kind of that entry level gun where guys can start customizing it and getting it to what they want yeah. in a, competi a, a competition gun that like the entry level guy could start out with, but then he could start modifying it and, you know, adding, you know, maybe sights or, you know, put, dropping a trigger, whatever it might be. But it's a great gun to get guys into that competition level. And yeah. it's a Colt. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, so we post these, this content on like our other platforms like YouTube and, and Facebook and all this stuff, oh, yeah. right? And so we get all these comments and uh, I love some of these comments, they crack me up. Um, <laughs> suggestion in 1911 for, now this is, this can be concealed carry or competition. Yeah, but, it could be. Um, he says, suggestion in 1911 for concealed carry is foolishness. Uh, Why? There are a lot of Why? people who carry a 1911. Yeah, a lot. I it's, used to it's carry It's a matter one. of training. Yep. He says, well, most people, you know, grip safety, uh, a hair trigger. It's um, not a hair trigger. I mean, it has, it's a, a, it has a thumb smooth safety. trigger. It it's not a hair trigger when you have the thumb yeah. safety on. Yeah. Trigger it's not. Off. You're right. Yeah. But um, I remember, well, well, we'll tease it and then we'll talk about it as we come yes. back from it. Ooh, the 450 Bushmaster. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one to talk about. But actually, we can, I can dive into this a little bit more. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, so, so 1911 for concealed carry is foolish. Uh, well trained, there are well trained individuals who carry, but for the average poorly trained citizen, this is not ideal. Um, well, then go get training. That's mm -hmm. it. That that's all it comes down to, guys. Is it's not what do you shoot well. Do you shoot a 1911 well and you've trained with it and you're proficient? Right. Then that's what you need to carry. Right. You don't need to carry something that has 16, 17 round capacity when you're not comfortable with it. And I mean, I think that's that's what our show, you know, Guns and Gear teaches. I think First Person Defender, our series online. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what we teach is proficiency in what <clears throat> you're going to carry. Yeah. And, you know, hey, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But it doesn't yeah. mean that it's not a good fit for a lot of people if that's right. what they prefer and that's that's what they're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, there are also people who are more comfortable with it because it has a thumb safety. Yes. Or because it has a hair trigger. Or or, or, or a grip safety. Yeah. Those are things that people actually like about it, carrying it, yeah. um, as far as the safety peace of mind for them. Well, and I'm sure I'm sure the same guy that commented probably is not carrying one in the pipe either. 
<laughs> he's scared. I mean, to do, he's scared he's, for that. He's scared. He's scared to to hold one in the chamber. But uh, uh, see, uh, Gerald, Gerald, why don't I carry the 1911 anymore? Is because I think I've exceeded the training with the firearm that I carry now, and and that's what I'm comfortable with, and so that's what I'm going to carry with. It's not that I'm not proficient in it, and I just feel more comfortable with the one that I've got now. Yeah. Um, also, we had a couple questions about on the barn segment. Um, one person said, will we see these in pistol calibers as far as, I guess he's being, as far as Barnes bullets being loaded in Remington right. ammo. Uh, most likely. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would, I, I, I could I would see that that's... being, you know, happening very soon. Um, and then this other guy says, no, thank you, prefer lead. But and there are people who are old school. That's fine. Lead is not, not a bad thing either. Um, that being said, the monolithic, all copper bullets, yeah. um, they hold their weight, See, weight retention, um, and they, they penetrate. Trigger the deal. Go for it. Trigger uh, the deal with Gun Dealio. Hey, hey and, and see, we're getting really good comments right now. Like Rick Rasnick carries full-size 9mm, has more training in it. That's exactly what we're saying. Carry what you're comfortable with. And then, Jason, you want a safety? Perfect. If that makes you feel more comfortable and you're more comfortable with that, go for it. People love 9mm, 1911. Yes, oh, we do. Yes. We do. I love shooting them. Oh, my God. Love shooting so them. sweet. See what I tell you? Because it's a cult. Nobody likes recoil. <laughs> Don't try to lie. <laughs> I love it. I eat recoil for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Beat me up. No, you don't. You don't love it. Which leaves more metal. Which leaves more weight out in front of the gun. I'm making an excellent point here if you pay attention. This is, All right, this is brilliant. Let me tune in. Okay. Um, it has a fiber optic front sight. Yeah. I prefer fiber optic over night sights. It jumps Why? out at me more. Yeah. Um, you pick it night up sights, it's got to be so dark to even notice the, the, pick up. the tribid, tritium. I mean, there are some nice night sights out, sights out there, but. 1911? Gotta love this gun. Fun to shoot. Accurate and fun. I mean, and not everybody's gonna. Look at it, it doesn't even move. No. There's no recoil on that. It's a 9mm. Oh this is gosh. the most glorious. That's the most glorious. glorious I feel like goatee ever. He's not quite Gandalf, but he's way cooler. He's he's wiser than Gandalf. Yes, much Seriously, wiser. If you ever get a chance to go see John Hollister like in our show, yes, like you've got to talk to this guy. Oh, he's the best, dude. Like he has the best travel. He was stories. also he was also an Atlanta detective in Atlanta in a, for like yeah. twenty years or something. Is this like just flying by or is it just me? Now we're talking about the 450 Bushmaster? Yeah. Now, why is this, why was this one so big? And I know we touch on it here in a little bit, but why is it so big right now? Ah, people it's just like, they're liking the big bore stuff. It's a straight wall cartridge. Yeah. And for those states, like in Illinois, yeah, you can now hunt. If you can with, check off all the lists, right? Yes. A straight wall cartridge, and maybe it has to have an external hammer or a single shot or whatever kind of goofiness that they come up with. <laughs> Rick Rastic says uh, uh, Hollister looks like the uh, master of kung fu. Yes, <laughs> yes. He and he's like that. He's like Confucius. He's the Confucius that of dude, guns. If he says something, especially about suppressors, I'd listen to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. People may not know he used to work for. Uh, Advanced Armament Corporation, yeah. AEC. Yep. So he knows suppressors yeah. really, really well. So, Gunsight, uh, or Gunsight, Ruger Scout Rifle, Gunsight Scout Rifle. Yes. Um, such sweet guns. Yeah. Sweet guns. 450 Bushmaster is just a, a new caliber for them. Um, right. But when you, now when you shoot this out the range, I can't wait till, till we get to that, and I know we're going to run really quick, but when you're shooting it, the muzzle brake on it, I don't, I don't, I think that's, we didn't, I don't know if we featured the muzzle brake as well as we could have. Well, yeah, we, we run out of time We run sometimes. out of time because you're, you're constrained to the, you're uh, contained into these small amounts of time Boom. for TV, but if you watch the, like the muzzle rise of this 450 Bushmaster, 
it's not bad. It's really not. And this is iron sights. I would say from the position that you're sitting to where the target is is probably roughly about 80 yards. Maybe yeah, a little. Maybe a touch remember. over. I was. I think it was like 300. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe 300. 700. Yeah. yeah. It was somewhere in there. I didn't have to hold over or anything. Yeah. But I mean, iron sights, and you shot this a couple times before because Matt was in town. He was out of town real quick. But. Yeah. You're shooting from the wrong side. Well, but I do that too. So, but you're shooting, you know, unaided. Four hundred yards at yeah, least. Obviously, four hundred yeah. yards. Yeah. But look at the muzzle rise. I mean, and that's. Uh, I, and we're talking about the muzzle break. So we did talk about it. It's special mostly because of this this bore size. So it's oh, super love precision my, rifle. The hey, GSR the yeah, the three hundred eight. Yeah. That's a nice gun, man. I've got one with the bolt on the correct side. The left side. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard for me because I grew up shooting right-handed, but I'm left-eye dominant. So recently, long guns, I switched. Mm -hmm. Well, recently, three years ago. And I still run, will run my bolt right-handed. Oh. <laughs> shooting left-handed, so. You need to go do some dry firing. Yes. Just yeah. get used to Just it. Just get used to it and take the time. Yeah. But who has time when you're shooting cool guns like this? I mean... Yeah, that was, that was a pretty uh, beefy muzzle break. It is. It's a beefy muzzle break, but it works. Oh. And now, finally, Tom gets to shoot guns. Yes. Finally. Brian let him have a turn. Pick you! Pick you! But yeah. Pick you! Pew! The root. Oh, look at that. See you later. <laughs> Hey. Right, there it is. Look at it. It's, and it's all its glory. But yeah, we've got, um, you know, these shoots, kind of what we do um, last year that you guys will uh, not recognize from this year. So this season's going to be a little bit different. We're mixing it up. We're mixing it this, up. This is season 10. It's a but, big season. And that's the new episodes will start um, the last week of June. Yeah. That's third quarter broadcast calendar something we say in the biz broadcast calendar yeah he likes to throw out big words yeah don't hold it against him <laughs> but but it's good we're mixing it up this year it's season 10 we're going to be filming different locations all across the country but typically kind of how these filmings uh went this year is we filmed a studio segment so we had our sponsors come in and then we were able to take all the firearms and all the gear out to a location and we shot it out there but uh it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of work for these shoots. I mean, when you're talking about like getting a three minute segment, you're not talking about like, you know, oh, it'll take 30 minutes to get that. No, it takes probably about two hours, two and yeah. a half hours to get a small, you know, yeah, and it three depends. minute segment. You know, and sometimes they're not even shot. A lot of times, actually, they're not shot on the same day. No. Because uh -huh. we're doing interviews, then we're going out to the range. But yeah, this year we're going to be mixing it up a little bit more. Um, a little bit more on location shoots, traveling around the country, yeah. um, looking for locations that help us show off the product or do some different d type of demonstrations, yeah. whether that's a, a shoot house or longer range or something, you know, some stuff like that. Uh, Dean says, I use 10 millimeter. Uh, it's funny because we uh, actually got to shoot a 10 millimeter this year. and uh, You on, shot a deer. On, I shot a deer with a 10 millimeter this year and it was my... Yeah. Iron sights, handgun hunting, different story. Uh, so that, not, not that's easy. All, no, it's not easy. It's not easy. No. And especially when you start talking about different height angles, uh, shooting from elevated stands. And, you know, I got to shoot that gun a little bit before I went out and get comfortable with it. But in the end, man, it, 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 it's mentally draining. When, <laughs> when you have a couple misses, it's mentally draining and your mind's not into it. But... I kept plugging and man, it ended up working and out. Oh, we're back. A, this is actually really good. But honestly, this is not a good choice for starting out a young shooter. Oh, 410. There's not a lot of shot in here. It's hard to break targets or. I wrote a newsletter piece over shooting, this. Yeah, it's my really first really gun I got to shoot choice. was a 410 because my dad thought that it was the right one to do. I hated it. Absolutely yes, hated gauge, it. 12 gauge, 28 gauge. But 410 mm -mm. is the bore size 
more like a cartridge. Yeah, it's not a gauge yeah. technically. As you know, now there are revolvers that you can shoot 410 in. That's a lot of fun for snakes, maybe for self-defense. We've actually used it for very close-up yeah. clay target shooting. By close-up, we're talking 15 feet, definitely not yeah. 15 yards. The 410, still as popular as it ever was, but remember, this is an expert's choice. Yeah, it's not a kid. It's not, not really perfect a kid. for kids. Yeah, I tell you, this now, is this is for kids. Yes. <laughs> this, this is for kids. This is for kids, really. <laughs> it really no, is. No joke. It, but it's for adults, too. I mean, I love these things. Yeah, the M&P 1522. So, yes. AR style gun in a 22. Right. Um, and there are a lot of, uh, re it's really lightweight. There's a lot, a lot of polymer. Um, at least yeah. the one I have is a lot of polymer in it. Yes. Um, because you can kind of get away with that with a 22. You could shoot it like one handed yeah. all day long. Oh, yeah. But I put a, a little red dot. Actually, it wasn't red dot. It's a two power ACOG. Really? It's a tiny oh, little, little, the little mini. tiny one? It's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Light up, you know, has a you know, lit yeah. reticle from Trigicon. And uh, super sweet to shoot. Everybody oh, loves it. The youngster can shoot this way. And the parent can run it out. He's saying. Hey. It's overall, it's a very nice lightweight platform. Oh, which 10 millimeter uh, gun did I use? I actually used a uh, Springfield Armory TRP, the new one. So that's the one I used. It yeah, was, it was. It's cool. on our YouTube channel. Yeah, and go we'll, check it out. We'll probably do some stuff with uh, with that and, and guns and gear coming up. I Steve S Steve Swiss said he said he's watching live. He killed his first uh, coyote with, with a, single, a shot. single shot 410. Hey. There's a lot of stuff that's hey. died to a 410. Yes, that's it. That that that's an expert. But as shot. far as, but as far as um, starting on kids, as far as like shot. wing shooting, you know, oh, I guess you know if you think of it as a slug, you can shoot 410 slugs. Yeah. You can kill whitetail with that. Yeah. Kill a oh yeah. Coyote with that. Um, but it, I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. But killing a coyote. I mean, that coyote had to be close. But yeah. Yeah. He died of a heart attack. Yes. <laughs> well, if I was shooting it as a kid, he would have. When he when he found out that they shot him with a 410, he was so irritated. <laughs> he he would have been so mad. <laughs> hey, if I ever get killed with a 410, like tell everybody I went down in a blaze of glory. Don't tell them it was a 410. <laughs> Please don't. For a t serious time, Giannis is actually, actually a really funny guy. Yeah, he's, like if you get, he's you kind get of an engineer guy. He is. He, he's very. But he's been with Smith and Wesson a long time. A long time. Stuff. And he knows his stuff, but he's actually really funny to talk to. When you get him kind of on his own, he kind of has that dry humor. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty funny. So now, obviously, 22s are always fun. Always. Oh, yeah. I was just talking to somebody today with a, a 22 rifle company, talking about the, the growth of yeah. uh, precision. Rifle 22, yeah, yeah, PRS uh, 22, yes, stuff, yeah, it's it's taken off. Well, and, you know, we uh, Tom actually flew up here with a cameraman uh, to the to Smith the and Smith Academy. and Wesson plant to uh, film this. So, you know, that's part of mixing it up. But this coming year, watch out, it's it's going to be big time. Yeah. And the target falls down, whether it's a tip can or targets like this. I love the fact that you can. I'm kind of jealous that he got to go, though. I really am. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it looked like a lot of fun. And I mean, anytime you're shooting with 22s, 22s are a great way to cure a lot of bad habits. Yeah. It really is. Well, I mean, they're doing some amazing things with 22s with accuracy oh, yeah, absolutely. and distance. <laughs> more. Give me more. Yeah, it's it, it really is it really is impressive. I love this thing. <laughs> he looks hey, like can, he's having fun. Yeah, well, yeah, I was going to say you can tell that he's having fun because it's just I mean it's the Smith and Wesson MMB 22. But yeah, oh, there here we go. I do have to point out a shot here that I yeah. missed. Yes, that's going to be good. <laughs> so this is up next. Coming up next is the Crimson Trace Laser. Um, I know you guys know them. Uh, I know you guys. A lot of you guys use them. Um, but you know, and we get a lot of comments on lasers. Um, yeah. And People I think people have opinions. Yes, everybody has their opinions on 
you know, do you use a laser? Do you use a laser with your carry gun? Do you not use a laser with your carry gun? But I think one of the most, like, the, the craziest comment that I ever get is, oh, it's too expensive. That's and so silly. And what do you have to say to that? Well, what I would say to, uh, if you say that, if, if we can agree that a laser on a firearm is helpful. Yes. It's another tool in your toolbox, especially when you're talking about it, a handgun for survivability. Yes. And you tell me it's too expensive, I will say what Tom Gresham says, which is, so you're the one who wants to buy a cheap parachute. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, that commercial. Okay, yeah. if you guys saw that commercial. Oh, the Timmy. The, yeah. yeah, the Timmy. This commercial, what we're seeing right now, the Timmy commercial. We went out and so our next door neighbor basically has this old truck. And so we went out and shot this commercial like on, I swear it was like, we were out there 40 minutes and we we're just like, yeah, keep driving back and forth because we love watching this old oh, truck. Oh, it was 1940s? Yeah, it's a nine, it's something yeah. like that. But it was that was a fun commercial to actually shoot. Um, see, so get, see Greg, other Greg, questions Greg, here. Greg, Greg has a laser. Greg, how do you like that laser? Do you, do you enjoy using it? Do you use it for self-defense? Do you practice with it? Do you train with it? Because um, I think... Anything that we're using, I mean, and, and the tools that we're using. How many of you guys carry a tourniquet on you daily? Mm. Um, how many of you guys do that? Because that's kind of important, especially in places where you can't take a firearm. You can always have a tourniquet, um, and that could mean life or death for somebody. So, um, yeah, home defense. I mean, yeah, there we go. Home defense is great. Uh, you, you hear a bump in the night, man. You can see it. Um, but we did. Oh, we actually you? have some videos coming out right uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Oh yeah. We did a, a laser, laser school. school. Well, um, well, what we did is. I mean, basically, is we did an honest test with three different people who didn't know anything what we were up to. Basically, had them shoot three different drills. With shooting it without the laser and then shooting it with a laser. We had a lady who works at a shooting range but doesn't really shoot. Mm -mm. She shoots uh, rifles. Rifles. I think the night else. before she had killed a hog yeah. from her like second story bedroom. Yeah. But so she doesn't shoot handguns. No handguns. And we had a guy who was, I want to say, ex military or ex uh, police officer. And then uh, a young guy. And then an, like a, but like an avid shooter. We call it Laser Lab. Yes. And basically just said, hey, let's just do this and see what their reaction is. Yeah. And we'll be posting that it's in a few weeks. shocking. Yeah. Uh oh, what are we? Well, we've got uh, shells for oh, this was a good, I'll, I enjoyed this one. How far away let's find out. the shot shell, shot, yeah, shot's going to work. Yeah, because snake loads in snake loads. a big bore revolver. Because the shot's spinning because of the rifling, it yes. comes out. So it's really it's it's the sh the pattern it's starts spreading kinda, out pretty quick. Yeah. So obviously, the close-up one it, it did pretty good. Easy. I'm sorry. I'm gonna shoot a snake at that distance. He's not. He's not charging you. I don't, a charging snake. No. It it could be a water moccasin, and it could be a. A rattlesnake. I don't care. He's getting shot at that distance. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you, but, no. you know. Eventually, we're going to run out of range on this. There's no range long enough where I wouldn't shoot a snake. You're just going to throw some I'm going to shoot a snake BBs. at that distance. Just because yeah. it's something to shoot at, right? No, because it's a snake. <laughs> 20 feet. Still, no. there's not much. Yes. There's not much. There's power a need to left. shoot a snake at that distance. But the but the no. shot shell. You get a, you get some in there. Not a whole lot. It'll be a magic BB. Yeah. It'll hit him right in his little snake right, brain. Right in the snake brain, man. I'm gonna brain him. But you, yeah. See, look, you hit it. I mean, come on. Back up to about 25 feet. Now let's be honest here. The snake is not exactly a threat to you at this point. Threat. But I understand. <laughs> Burn the woods down. Burn we, them down. We have to move, honey. Yeah. I tell you, man. Yeah, see, you look at the pattern. It's, yeah, you, it's not it's, much there. It's almost around it, it looks like. But, hey, there's that magic BB right oh, there. Oh, it's going to right in the snake brain. Yep. No, you shoot them. 
if at this distance you probably have the option to walk away. No. Nope. So there you go. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe he was no. a good snake. No, it wasn't good a snake. No. Nope. Now, okay, the bull snakes, the king snakes, stuff like that. I'll let walk. Not. No. Uh 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 uh. <laughs> Laser guard pro. We have. Little known Laser fact, Gary's a guitar player. He ago, is a guitar player. A hobbyist <laughs> guitar player. Thank you, Rick. I'm glad you agree with me. <laughs> yeah, everybody says no. Snake bat. Yeah, snake bat. Yes. You know, I, I do agree. Why are we like that with snakes? Uh, it's in the Bible. I think it started then. <laughs> oh. Uh, so every accessory manufacturer, when they make an accessory for pistols, they start with Glock. Because yes, there are more yeah. Glocks than anything else yeah. out there. So it's like, it's always available for Glock 19, Glock 17 first. Yeah. And then they'll start making it for other stuff. Oh, whether yeah. it's sights or lasers or holsters or whatever. Right. Normal firing grip, it's on. But you were saying that you can actually program it. We so had a good night out with You can. So there's, there's four that different night. modes of activation. In, so, in Baton Rouge, must have been good. Yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were we were in bed maybe about eleven, eleven fifteen, one. <laughs> also, Gary uh, is a big craft beer guy. Which, you know, yes, he is. Yeah. I, I'm I'm somewhat of a big craft beer guy. Yeah. Mm, beer. Okay, perfect. And it really just fits right onto the rail and trigger These guard. Are, I mean, it's kind of seamless. I can't. Exactly. I, and we, I don't and know, a part of that laser lab, too, we did some training with Greg Lappin yeah. of Vada Training Center. So he went through a shoot house with, you know, with the Crimson Trace Grips and stuff like that. And those videos are up as well. So you need to, like, definitely go check those out. Yeah. Okay, here, here's where I was telling you. So you're hitting it. No, you hit all three of those. I looked. Yeah. No. I went back and looked, and I was like, oh, my gosh, did he miss one? And I was rewinding it, and I was like, oh, no. Well, I guess he didn't, because I just saw, like, you can see it. I, you know, we have editors, and so. Well, and they're, you know. they, they are good editors. <laughs> but hitting hitting a moving target, a lot of guys really Look at the think, tongue. The technique yeah, with the tongue. The, hey, you got to have that tongue out. Yeah. But, so... The the target that's moving, I was way off. Oh, he's off running camera, the target, and I'm running the target because we didn't have the remote control. Yeah, they have it set it. up with a wall that you can stand behind and yeah. stuff. So I'm sitting back there running this thing out like. <laughs> oh man! I mean, he says a little faster. That means. I mean, KJ, KJ go hurry faster. Up. And here I go, go faster. Go faster, yeah. There's a the tongue again. And I think. And I kind of ran out of steam right there. Like, that was kind of all I had. <laughs> this day, it was raining a lot. Like, this was filmed yeah. in between, in between thunderstorms. You can kind of see the rain yeah. stuff on my shirt. We're uh, rain drops. So yeah. We're kind of dodging it. Yeah. I mean. Well, there you go. That was it. That was fun. Uh, don't forget, check our YouTube page out. Check our Facebook page out. Thank you to Sportsman's for yep. hosting us. Thanks for Thank having us. We really appreciate that. But awesome. our newsletter, don't forget to go sign up it, guntalk.com. And uh, and watch Gun Venture. That'll be coming on in a few minutes or, what, 30 minutes, I think. 30 minutes, yeah. So watch our Gun Venture show as well. And uh, new episodes of uh, from Guns and Gear starting in late June, early July. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Thanks.